we have already discussed question 1 of question paper 5 1 and 5 3 of the examination series 9701 chemistry may june that is summer 2024 and in this video we are going to discuss question 2 so let's go ahead okay so here is question 2 and it says the activation energy ea for the reaction between dilute hydrochloric acid and an aqueous sodium thiosulfate can be determined by an initial rates method and here is the equation given the solid sulfur formed in these uh, is seen as a white suspension in the reaction mixture so here we can see that the solid sulfur is formed and it is seen as a white solid or white precipitates in the reaction mixture the reactants are mixed and the time t for a fixed quantity of sulfur to be formed is recorded and a measure of the initial rate of the reaction is 1 by t so that's how we measure the rate okay so the standard solutions of 0.1 mole per dm cube sodium thiosulfate and 0.5 mole per dm cube hydrochloric acid are supplied to us and the measurements are taken for a series of temperatures using the following procedure so here is the procedure given and so we need to understand that what are we changing what factor are we changing or what is an independent variable in uh, this uh, experiment is a temperature so temperature is the independent variable that is we are changing the temperature and measuring the time okay so what are the steps given here is a thermostatically controlled water bath is set up a 100 centimeter cube conical flask is labeled a and a second 100 centimeter conical flask is labeled b okay so we have two conical flasks labeled a and b and 10 centimeter cube of 0.1 uh, mole per dm cube sodium thiosulfate is added to flask A and it is placed in water bath again in the second flask B we are adding 10 centimeter cube of 0.5 mole per dm cube hydrochloric acid and again that's placed in water bath okay wait for 10 minutes flask A is removed from the water bath and placed on a tile marked with a black cross the content of the flask B are added to flask A and the timer is started okay the timer is stopped when the black cross is no longer visible and the time is recorded fine so this is the procedure let's go ahead with the questions here it says suggest a reason why it is necessary to wait for 10 minutes in step 5 okay what's the step 5 step 5 says that we have added flask a and flask b in the water bath and wait for 10 minutes now the only reason is that the solutions in the flask a and b should reach a constant temperature fixed in the water bath so let's write write that the solutions the solutions or even you can say the contents the solutions of flask of flask a and b should reach the same constant temperature the same constant temperature which is set in the water bath and that's why we wait for 10 minutes uh, by keeping this flask in the water bath okay the next part says the procedure does not mention how a value for the temperature of the mixture during reaction is obtained so here no measurement of temperature is mentioned here so state the temperature measurements that should be taken and at which stage in the procedure they should be taken okay what have they asked is state the temperature measurements that should be taken what kind of temperature measurements and at which stage okay so we should mention that there should be some initial and final temperature measurements so that's how they mean to say state the temperature measurements and at which stage so at which stage is that before starting of the experiment and the moment the uh, precipitate appears and the black cross uh, is not seen and we stop the timer that temperature also has to be measured and as we are mixing uh, the reactants in flask a so we can mention the temperature measurements of flask a so we can mention let's write uh, measure the temperature measure the temperature temperature of flask A of flask A before just before just before mixing the two solutions just before mixing the 
two solutions two solutions and when the cross this appears cross this appears so these are the two measurements we'll be doing that is just at the start of the reaction that is before just before mixing the two solutions and at the end of the reaction that is when the cross disappears these are the two temperature measurements we are going to take the next part says state how to use the temperature measurements to determine an accurate value for the temperature for the mixture during the reaction now what actually they are trying to ask is if we have measured two temperatures initial and final that is at the start of the reaction at the end of the reaction how are we going to use these temperature measurements to determine an accurate value of the temperature so what we can say is that take the mean take the mean take the mean or the average you can say average of the two temperature measurements of the two temperature measurements what are the two temperature measurements what we have mentioned in the part a so average of the two temperature measurements so that is how we'll get the accurate value of the temperature which we are going to use for our further calculation okay the next part is a student carries out the procedure at three different temperatures and record the measurements in table 2.1 here complete table 2.1 record the values for the temperature to the nearest whole number okay so the temperature we have to record to the nearest whole number and the values of 1 by 2 to four decimal places now this is very important four decimal places and the nearest whole number for the temperature so okay if we convert temperature here is given in degree celsius and we need to convert it to kelvin we need to have it plus 273 for all the temperature measurements and for this value we are going to divide these values uh, by 1 so 1 upon these values will give us the 1 by t per second values so let's write that so for the first one if it is 15 plus 273 that's 288 now if it's 273 plus 24 we get 297 and for the last one 32 plus 273 we get 30 5 and for the next column that is 1 by t values if we do it we get 0.0057 now mention it's clearly mentioned to four decimal places so we are writing it this way so 0.0109 and 0.0 One six one. So these are the values which uh, we calculate and complete the table. Next part is that a student, a second student, carries out the procedure at six different temperatures and analyzes their data to give the results given in table two point two. Now this is a different student's readings, but here one by t value and the log of one by t time is given here, which is negative. And the next part is. Use the results given in Table two point two to plot a graph on the grid in Figure two point one. That's here in the grid to show the relationship between log one upon t and one by t temperature. So use a cross. Understand? Use a cross to plot each data point. Draw a line of best fit. So we can see here in the grid that on y-axis we have log of one by the timings, and in the x-axis we have one upon temperature in per Kelvin. Okay, so here are the label also given to x-axis and y-axis in the negative value. So uh, I'll just pause the video and complete the graph for you with this table given. all these points will be plotted remember but that has to be with the cross and also draw a best fit line to show you okay so i minimize the graph grid for you so that it can be seen in the whole screen here and you can see that i have plotted all these six points which are mentioned in the table uh 2.2 and i uh, have drawn the points in the crosses and you can see that the best fit line what i have drawn is 
that you can see out of six points there are four points which are almost lying on the uh, yeah all four points which are lying exactly on the line and there are two points here you can see that there are two points uh, which are just above and below the line so that's how we draw the best fit line that is we need to draw a best fit which is passing almost throughout all the points and if there are few points above and below see to it there are equal number of points above and below the line so i tried that only one point is above and one point is below the line and so this is how we're trying to draw the best fit line so let's go ahead with the other parts of the question okay the next part after the graph is that determine the gradient of your line of best fit in figure 2.1 state the coordinates of both points you use in your calculation this must be selected from your line of best fit give the gradient to three significant figures so we have to choose two coordinates uh, in the graph and uh, let's give the coordinates uh, to find out the gradient so again here is our graph and I'm going to choose this point and uh, the point here for our coordinates. So if I choose that's going to be the second and fifth point on the exact uh, which is lying exactly on my best fit line. Now we can't choose the points which are away from the best fit line. So these two points are lying exactly on the best fit. I'm choosing these points as uh, for calculating my gradient. So let's go ahead. Yeah, so for me, the first point will be 0 0.00336 and uh, minus 1.99. And this is the first coordinate and the second coordinate is going to be 0 0.00302 and minus 1 point, minus 1 point. To one. So this is how I'm going to calculate the gradient that is slope and slope is equal to y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1. So let's do that and that is a 1 point minus 1.99 minus of minus that is plus 1.22 divide by uh, its value 0 0.00336 minus 0 0.00302 so this is how we are going to calculate why have i actually uh, the coordinate should come this way and that way why because this is the fifth coordinate and that's the first coordinate right second coordinate yeah so it's uh, fine even if you but then uh, we need to calculate this way and the value which we are getting is 3.5 6 into 10 power 3 that's how we get it 3.556 into 10 power 3 that's how we get and if the slope is this way uh, we get it in Kelvin so let's write it here 3.556 into 10 power 3 that's the gradient we have already calculated so let's go ahead with the next part and it says uh, an equation relating the time and the temperature variable is shown and this is the equation where Ea is here plus the constant determine the activation energy Ea for this reaction using this equation and use your answer to D2. D2 is what the gradient which we have calculated. If you were unable to calculate then this is a value you can use but then we have already calculated so that's fine include units in your answer show your working show your working now what's the thing is that we need to rearrange this equation to get the gradient on one side and activation energy on the other side so if activation energy is here so if I write it activation energy here so then on the other side we get log 1 by t here okay and 0 0.434 ea is here already that goes in the division so 0 0.434 in the division the negative sign and the r value which is above here that goes to the multiplication here and if we pass out the t that goes in the multiplication here in the t but if we want to gradient in the gradient we have already seen that the um, y 
x-axis was 1 by t and upon the x-axis now x-axis was 1 by the temperature t value so if we pass this t value down here then we can write it this way so this value and this value together that is the expression this gives us the gradient so if we rearrange we can write it as ea is equal to gradient into r upon 0 0.434 and r we already know that it is 8.31 so if we substitute all these uh, values then we can see that our gradient is 3.556 Let's substitute that as 3.556 into 10 power 3 into 8.31. The negative value which is here should say upon 0 0.434. Now substituting all these values we get 68088.38. That's what we have already got the value. But if you check the value of R here, that is joules per Kelvin mole. That is how we use uh, the value of the gas constant R. Now the gradient is um, in Kelvin, okay, and there is a constant value. Okay, yes, I was uh, supposed to tell you this constant which we need to ignore as if we express uh, it as an Y intercept, then we don't need to substitute that value and ignore so that's how we ignore and rearrange the value as i have shown here so i forgot to mention that constant has to be taken as an y intercept and which we can omit for now and uh, so if we have got this value but the thing is that joules is uh, given here but generally activation energy or any kind of energy we express it in kilojoules per mole okay so if we need to change this into kilojoules this is the value which we get in joules per mole so if we divide it by thousand we get 68.088 so this is how we get the activation energy and this is 68.088 kilojoules per mole if you are writing this value as such then you can write as joules per mole but then generally we write all the energies in kilojoules okay it says use your graph to state whether the results from the experiment are reliable justify your answer to me the results are reliable so i'll write that the results are reliable the results are reliable as most of the points most of the points of the points lie on the line on the line or close to the line very close to the line so to me the results are reliable but at times the students may answer that the results are not reliable because there are two points which are not lying exactly on the line that is also acceptable but for me the best fit line was very easily drawn so the results are reliable okay the last part of the question is that suggest a change to one of the controlled variable that the student could make so that the time measured for a given temperature is shorter now the temperature time um, okay the time should be shorter that shows that the reaction should get over faster now if we talk about the controlled variables what are the two controlled variables the first thing is the concentration of the two solutions which we are taking that has to be maintained same for all the experiments we are performing plus the volume of the solutions or in both flask a and flask b that is sodium thiosulfate and hydrochloric acid both has to be same now out of that out of these two variables what can we change to make the timer shorter that is to complete the reaction faster now for me the easiest part is increase the concentration so we can say that use the solutions use the solutions either both or single solutions of higher concentration use the solutions of higher concentration 
and that is how we can make the time shorter that is complete the reaction faster and mm, uh, okay the temperature uh, we are changing and measuring the time so this is how we will conduct the experiment and answer paper 5 very easily i hope throughout this discussion i have mentioned you all the important examination tips which we should be taking care while writing paper 5 in both the questions